Hello, everybody. Today, I want to tell you the story of the greatest basketball player I ever saw play. Now, you might think, in all the years that I've been playing basketball, over half a century, that I've seen some really exceptional players, and certainly most recently people like LeBron James or Michael Jordan, uh, people like that, or years ago with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar or Wilt Chamberlain, Lewis Reed, Walt Frazier, um, etc. But the greatest player I ever saw play was none of those professionals. The greatest player I ever saw play was a boy that we affectionately called Binky. And my association with Binky started when I was in elementary school. And when I was in elementary school, I used to play basketball as often as I could. And I used to go to one or two, three different gyms. One in my community, a gym that was in a neighboring junior high school, and a gym at the Boys and Girls Club. So in the community I lived in, we played basketball in our recreational center quite a bit. And every now and then, a group of people from a neighboring community that we call the Orton Street community would come and challenge the older boys from my community. And that was the first time that I had seen Binky play. His name was Bernard Crosby, and he was from the Orton Street area. And when they used to come to my community to challenge the older boys in my community to play, I noticed the flair that Binky had. And you couldn't help but follow him because his style of play was like Earl Monroe. And those of you who know basketball back from the 60s, 70s, and 80s, Earl the Pearl Monroe started and played in college at Winston-Salem. And then he went to the pros and played for the Bullets and then was traded to the New York Knicks near the end of his career. Binky's style was like that. He had what we call a shake and bake kind of game, sort of very um, herky-jerky kind of moves, a lot of spin moves through the legs, behind the back, stutter step, jab step, and always advancing toward the basket. So the first time I saw him do that was in my community when I was in elementary school. But as I got older and got into junior high, the junior high school was sort of in between my community and this neighboring Orton Street community. And the rivalry continued where the older boys from my community would go to this junior high school in order to challenge the Wharton Street community from time to time on Saturday mornings. So I remember going to many Broadway junior high school gym Saturday morning challenges of my community versus Wharton Street where Binky would lead the way for his team and always steal the show with his flamboyant, herky-jerky type moves. He was so sensational that he's the only player that I can ever say made me anxious to want to see him play. Now, I've watched LeBron James on television, and I've watched Michael Jordan do amazing things throughout the games, as well as win games at the last second over and over again. But never have I felt anxious to want to see a player as I did in anticipation for wanting to go and watch Binky play. I just want to describe a little bit what Binky could do that made him so great in my view. 
and so unlike any other player that I've played with. And again, as I've said, I've played with or certainly seen all the great players in basketball in the last half century, but also have played with many great players myself, which include um, the great Ray Allen, I'm currently playing for the Miami Heat. I've played with Vin Baker, former NBA All-Star. I've played with John Shoemate. I've played with Sly Williams from the Knicks. I've played with David Rivers, who was the backup for Magic Johnson um, for um, the um, Los Angeles Lakers for um, several years. I've played with Katino Mobley, who was the starting point guard for the Houston Rockets. I've played with a lot of good pros, and I've also played with numerous college basketball players throughout my um, college and post-college basketball playing days. But Binky Cosby was just so electric. He would start bringing the ball down. Someone would take it out of bounds at the far end of the court. He would start dribbling. And his forte was not just to help win a game or score baskets, but he could take the whole other team's players to the hoop, meaning five defenders from the other team. He could make moves and end up shaking and baking and spinning and moving against all five of the other team's defenders and then end up at the rim for a layup or a short jumper. And not only could he do that once, but I saw him in various games over many years do it time and time again and again where he had four other teammates, but he really didn't need them. He would pass the ball every now and then because, you know, he was tired or somebody had a wide open shot or something like that just to include people. But any time there was any doubt about the outcome of the game, Binky would just take the ball from the far court, start dribbling down, and everybody who tried to guard him one-on-one, -on -one, double team him, switch and pick him up, he would have a move waiting for them that would elude them and allow him to progress closer and closer to the basket until he ultimately scored. And he could just do this repeatedly. A highlight of my observations with Binky is when I was in probably eighth grade, maybe ninth grade, and Binky, I believe at the time, was a senior in high school. Certainly he was three or four years older than I was. And I was coming home from somewhere downtown, and I just happened to go by a school called Central High School. At the time, Binky was going to Barringer. And as I was going by, Central High School was probably 6 o'clock in the evening um, on my way home, most likely. The door to the Central High School gym was open. And so I just happened to, since I was walking past there, I just happened to look in because I thought I heard cheering. And the side door was open, and I looked in, and it just happened to be Barringer versus Central High School. Now, again, I was in 8th or ninth grade at the time. And I knew Binky played for his high school team, but, you know, I hadn't been going to any games. So I peeked in the side door and saw him. And certainly, once I saw that it was Binky playing, he was on the court, the game was already in progress. I walked in and nobody stopped me, so I just sat down and watched the game. What I saw was the same thing that I had experienced watching Binky for many years, and then playing with Binky um, when I got to middle school, like seventh and eighth grade and ninth grade, he started from the far end, and this is an organized formal high school uh, varsity team, Barringer High School. He started from the far end of the court, and he was taking the entire Central High School team, again, through one-on-ones, double teams, triple teams, switching on him, trying to pick him up. They're trying to box and one him. But no matter what Central High School tried to throw at him, he was just so flamboyant, so herky-jerky, so in control of the basketball that there was nothing that they could do. 
And I watched that game, Binky, repeatedly. I'll say it again. Repeatedly score on the entire Central High School team. And it's that sort of repeated ability that makes Binky, Bernard Cosby, the absolute greatest player that I've ever seen play. The sad part is this. It's my understanding that Bernard never played in college, that he had personal issues. Um, I'm really not acquainted with um, what they may have been, but he never played in college. Um, he, you know, ended up passing away. Um, I don't know how long, you know, I don't think it was right away after high school, but within 20 years after high school, he was dead um, as a result of whatever issues um, he was unable to overcome in the end. Um, he never turned out to get the exposure that he certainly would have demanded had he been put in a spotlight greater than his high school team. I'm sure that with what I saw, if he were put on a stage of college, um, he certainly would have been another, if not the Earl of Pearl Monroe, um, but in a class of his own. Because even though Earl of Pearl, as I mentioned, was the closest player that I know to the style of game he played, Binky was better at those types of moves, in my view, than Earl of Pearl. So I, I just wanted to tell you about Bernard Crosby, a.k.a. Binky, as the best player I ever saw, because a lot of times you think we have to see some tremendous athlete from who trained their whole life and was on all the um, known and accomplished stages to get the notoriety that they, that they certainly um, earned and deserve. Binky Cosby was just a local kid who had extraordinary ability and there may be people like that, not necessarily just in basketball, but in other things that are right around you and you probably see on a regular basis and may take for granted. I don't know. Um, in my case, Binky Cosby wasn't someone who I took for granted, but you certainly could not ignore his game. Um, for you to see him play, you would remember him. And I know I used to make special trips when I knew he was going to be playing in just pickup games in one of the three communities that I described, my community's recreation center, the um, junior high school gymnasium that was sort of in the middle of our two communities, the Orton Street community where Binky lived and my community, or the Boys and Girls Club's um, gymnasium. When I knew he was playing, I made special arrangements, reorganized my schedule to go see him play. And here we are now, half a century, a little less than half a century later, and he still remains the greatest basketball player I've ever seen.